Farina is here at last. And today, I'll be telling you how to build her best. Let's get into it. So, what are Farina's best artifacts? Well, Four Piece Golden Troop is for sure her best in slot. Farina's DPS only comes from her skill, so this set works great with her. There's no better choice for our drama queen. Don't use Four Piece Mayonnaise Hunter. This set only works well at C6, and Farina doesn't have any need to be on field. The two piece is also worthless to her. Mix and match sets include two piece hydro bonus percent, two piece HP percent, and two piece golden troop. As for main stats, Farina actually has three viable routes HP percent, HP percent, crit percent, HP percent, damage percent, crit percent, and ER percent, HP percent, crit percent. Surprise! An HP goblet is better than a hydro goblet. If you have a very good Hydro Goblet, use it as a placeholder. But once you get a very good HP Goblet, replace it for more damage. Use ER% percent if you're using a non-ER weapon or are lacking ER substats. Since Farina's ER costs are thick. I'll touch on that in a moment. Her substat priorities look a little something like this. Now for ER. Farina's burst has a cost of 60. Not bad, right? Actually, take a look at this sheet here to see exactly how much ER Farina needs in every scenario. Pause if you'd like to read for longer. For artifact specifics, Golden Troop is at 100%, while all of her picks are at 85-90% to of Troop's power. So, use Golden Troop. Let's dive into our sweet Farina's best weapons. R1 Splendor of Still Waters is her best in slot pick. Huge crit stick, and an excellent passive which fuels her with HP. The main major downside of this weapon is how hard it will be to get enough ER on your Farina. So yes, her highest damaging option, but be ready to go ER fishing. Nice weapon name too, extravagant for a dramatic lady. R1 Jade Cutter is 12% worse, and has a similar issue of no ER. Great crit stick as well, and does provide Farina with a fixed 20% HP bonus. I mean, it's alright! Now we reach her best free-to-play choice, R5 Festering Desire. You fossil players in the audience are lucky, since this is close to her best in slot in practice. Nice ER stick while providing plenty of skill damage, you can't go wrong here. Major downside is, uh, this thing's been gone for a long while. Festering Desire is followed by R1 Key of Kajuni Suit. The HP% percent stick is huge, but the EM buff is worthless. No ER again. R5 Floive Sandra Ferryman, or a brown pipe, is nice, since while the DPS is lower than Festering Desire, the ER it gives is huge. A nice crit stick passive as well. R5 Wolf's Fang. This is the new Fontanian Battle Pass Sword. It also happens to be a viable choice on Farina. No ER, but the passive works well with her. I don't think it's worth it, considering this weapon costs as much as the second most expensive Genesis pack over 5 patches. R1 Foliar Incision may be a random mention, but it is viable. Huge crit stick and has some skill damage bonuses in its passive. Last and for sure least, R5 Favonius. This choice works on Farina. It's quite cope. You get great ER out of it, but her damage suffers a lot here. Pretty much the last choice you'd want to make, but it's there. Team-wide ER gets lower too, which is neat. So, since most of us aren't dinosaurs, and her 5-star weapons are annoying to play around, fish for the pipe. Yes, fishing is annoying, I know, but then your only ever cheap option is her worst. Take a look at this sheet here, which ranks Farina's viable options. Pause if you'd like to read for longer. Before we move on, if you're enjoying the video, consider liking and subscribing. Consider even leaving a cool comment down below. If you do, you can commit crimes free of charge. Now, where exactly does Farina work? She works everywhere. To start, let me say that Farina's a double hydro upgrade. All you Xingqiu haters can finally boot him off your teams. Waifu duo Yulan, Farina, now sit on top. She deals more DPS than Xingqiu in this team, and this core is extremely strong. What about a more specific comparison? Xingqiu has more Hydro application than both Yulan and Farina, and Yulan applies more Hydro than Farina. 
but few teams need Xingqiu levels of Hydro application, and such teams that do tend to run double Hydro. As for damage, Verena outdamages both Xingqiu and Yulan on 4-star weapons, but give Yulan her 5-star best in slot and she beats Farina. Remember that Farina's AoE and Yulan's single target, so in AoE scenarios, Farina will deal more DPS. So, how can you abuse this core? Stick Jean or Baiji on the end. Farina needs a healer to work. Those two will be Farina's very best healing choices. Other healers like Charlotte, Noelle, and Kokomi are viable too. Baiju in particular is insane because his healing on his skill is team-wide. This is a very valuable asset to Farina teams. Jean has a nice quality in being able to proc 4vv for teams. Huge heals too, a pair of Jeans finally has a place in the meta at last. As for Hu Tao Double Hydro, here's an exciting synergy I wanted to talk about. Hu Tao, Yulan, Farina, and Jean. Yes, Jean. Jean gives Hu Tao VV and very consistent heals. She's the new best in slot flex for Hu Tao Double Hydro. You can also replace Jean with Bennett, but Bennett's buff up time is lower since he needs to heal himself, and his buff isn't as effective on Hu Tao. Rational works, but be careful, you will only get 3 Shangling Bapes per rotation. The pain of low Hydro application. You can stick any unit in front of the Farina Double Hydro Core. Use any team-wide healer, or better, a healer that can drive the team. For example, Kokomi Mono Hydro will also become even better with Farina. Her on-field team-wide healing will be very good. Plus, Farina's neat with Noel. She heals the team of Farina's HP drain and gets her damage boosted big time by Farina. So Noel mains are eating good right now. As for Fontanian units, we all know that Noivalet will be her best partner in crime. Noivalet drains HP during his hydro pumps fast, too. Farina can provide up to a 75% damage bonus in this team. For reference, in her worst case scenario teams, she provides 33%. Definitely Farina's strongest team. This also gives Nerd Village a proper dedicated support. She'll also be able to support Reese in Reesley Double Hydro Freeze. Reese Burgeon is another weird team you can try if you're feeling up to it. You can use Farina in any team with a healer. Great, now you know your dear Archon is as flexible as ever. But how does she work? Well, let's get into precious Farina's talents. Her normals, while very pretty, only deal four strikes of physical damage. Nothing much to see here. We'll touch on her charged attack in a moment. Farina also has both Fontanian alignments, Ouija and Numa. Ouija is her damage mode, and Numa is her healing mode. Her skill's healing mode isn't that good. To explain, she summons a little guy who heals your on field character based on her max HP. Nothing special. Farina's damage mode is far more interesting. She'll deal some AoE hydro damage and then summon three guys Chad, Dude, and Fellow. Here's how they attack. They will shoot at enemies, but prioritize damaging the enemy you're attacking. If your teammates are above 50% HP, the guys will drain your character's HP. After doing this four times, they will deal damage scaling off 140% of your on-field character's DPS. So, when your character deals damage, they will add 140% of that DPS on top of the damage already dealt. Her charged attack allows Farina to switch between modes fast. While her summons from damage mode are active, she can walk across water. Pretty neat. Now for the meat of Farina's kit. Her burst. Farina deals some AoE hydro damage. Then she applies the universal revelry state to your teammates. This means every time your party members gain or lose a percentage of HP, Farina will gain one fanfare point. Based on how much fanfare she has, Farina will increase everybody's damage bonus percent. She increases incoming healing bonus in healing mode. The damage bonus has a conversion ratio of 0.25%. How can we find out how much bonus she can give? Multiply 0.25 by the amount of fanfare points you can generate. She can have a max of 300 fanfare points, meaning at max stacks, she can provide 75% damage bonus. She'll always provide 33% even in her worst case scenario. Her buffing is team-wide. Then for her ascension passives. 
Her A1 allows Farina to heal your on-field character if they get overhealed by another source. Another source would be something like Hokumi's Jellyfish or Baiju's Shield, anything that isn't Farina. Farina's A4 is a neat damage increase. For every 1000 HP she has, she can buff her damage mode. She'll increase the damage her summons do by 0.7% up to 28%. This caps out at 40k HP. Aim for this when building her. She also decreases her healing interval from 0.4% to a max of 0.16%. But remember, her healing mode is dead. In the water! Um, sorry about that. Now for her talent priorities. They're pretty straightforward. Her kit is generally burst-based, so you always want to work to keep that up. Her skill is very important too, as it's where all her DPS comes from. You don't have to bother leveling her normals. At least, not until C6. Speaking of C6, let's take your Farina to the stage. What are her comms like? This C1 is super good. Increases her fanfare cap by 100, making the new cap 400. 150 stacks upon using her burst is pretty awesome too, a 12% damage increase, and a 112% increase overall. If you're on the fence between Sig and C1, get C1. Huge buffs to Farina's burst here. During her burst, Farina's fanfare gain from everyone's HP increases by a whopping 250%. Each point of fanfare above this limit increases Farina's max HP by 0.35%, and the most HP you can get this way is 140%. Crazy 38% DPS increase, 150% increase overall. Upgrade to her burst by plus 3, a 7% DPS increase, and a 157% increase overall. Whenever Farina summons do their thing, Farina restores 4 energy. This can happen once every 5 seconds. Sounds little, but consider how much ER Farina needs, so this is actually a tidy 20% DPS increase, 177% overall. Upgrades her skill by plus 3, an 18% DPS increase, and a 195% increase overall. Turns our lovely Lady Farina into an on-field Hydro DPS. She can fire off 7 powerful Hydro Normals within 10 seconds. It makes a huge difference in Farina's gameplay. She doesn't need a healer anymore. First time I'm considering a C6, actually. Anyways, a 58% DPS increase and a 253% increase overall. One of the biggest C6 increases in the game. Here's a quick sheet which displays how much of a DPS increase each of Farina's constellations are. Pause if you'd like to read for longer. Get C2 first, and then get her signature weapon. Very good cons. Farina is the best character in the game. Meta defining, pull her, no questions asked. She'll be the most powerful Hydro in the game to date, and she is also now my second favorite character. Sorry, Mr. Worldwide, you've got knocked down a peg. Flexible, powerful, and an insane boost to the current meta. Whether you're a free-to-play or a whale, Farina will for sure deliver. I hope this guide was able to get your Farina completely dissolving her enemies. Well then, this has been Juice, signing out, and I wish you all a day of suspenseful, dramatic joy.